effects of the pandemic is that most of the social service structures that mediate violence in the community were taken out of commission, particularly gang intervention and particularly the direct intervention against retaliation that happens where, let's say, there's a shooting and retaliation interventionists will go in and basically get with the, the family and the friends and the, and the, the gang mates of the people who were killed and and talk them down and get them you know get them to kind of go all right we don't need to you know retaliate and perpetuate a cycle and none of that was able to happen during the pandemic and um, there hasn't been we have we haven't been open up enough yet for all that stuff to gear up and start to have an effect again and it's not going to happen before the summer's over so get I ready th- I think too um, the cycle of uh, Derek Chauvin and George Floyd, the defund the police effort, the violence against police officers. I was talking with Brad Garrett this morning, and just this year, 37 police officers have been killed in all of last year. So we're only six months in, right, this year? All of last year it was 47. And I think that what you're seeing is the killing of cops is being mirrored just like this story. The violence across the country is, is mirroring that. And I think you're right. I think it has to do with uh, services, but I also think it has to do with um, kind of a lack of respect, not just for the badge, not just for that sort of thing, but lack of respect for each other, period. It's like we lost all of our manners. It's like we lost, we, we, we have pent up frustrations during COVID. I, I don't get it. We came out of our houses angry in a lot of, have you noticed, like going to the grocery store, people are just, they don't talk. It's very just cold, and it's, did we do that because when we were masked up, you know, it was very important to kind of keep to yourself and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Are we still perpetuating that? I don't know what it is, but it's not, it doesn't feel nearly as nice this time around. Well, the sense of community's gone. Yeah. Also, the sense of individual responsibility to help the community is gone. Gone, yeah. And I think it's also this. I think that we got used to having space. Yeah. Uh, we got used to not seeing as many people. Yeah. Now, you go to the store, the store's full again, and I think a lot of people are having the reaction of, like, who the F are all these people in my yeah. store right now? Yeah. And I've noticed... Now, this is something I've always been very sensitive to for whatever reason. So, I, it's not like, suddenly, I've, pay, I've decided to pay attention to this. I've always, for whatever weird... I'm weird... People now, I notice, have zero sense of social, spatial relationship. In other, in other words, I mean, there, there always were people who, like, came up behind you. Like, you're looking at apple cider vinegar at the grocery store for five seconds, and here comes some guy who just reaches right across you to grab something. But what I've noticed now is it's way more people who don't seem to literally know where they are in relation to the other people in the space that they're in. Yeah. And that, I think, is probably creating, I think there's a lot of frustration around, I don't want all these people, like, every, just being in the same store with me makes you the enemy. Yeah, on the road. I noticed that's me on the road. You know, I was driving in every single day during the pandemic. Days where I could go a mile or two and never see a car early in the morning during the commute. Now there's all these people on the road, and I'm like, where did you people come from? Go back home. I liked it when there was no traffic. Yeah. So I I get that feeling. I do. Have you seen the pictures of this car crash in Chino? No. You know what? I haven't seen them. It's... But tell the people, it's not just a car crash, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. So imagine, a car is driving through a neighborhood, it goes around the corner, it loses control. It goes, hits the center median, and then flips over a backyard wall into a nearby pool. Three people in the car were ejected, two of them died, one of them is still in the hospital, Still not sure what caused the car to slam into the median. Cops are saying the cause is still under investigation. I have to wonder if they were going too fast. Of course they were. Around a corner. Of course they were because 
you've got to be at a certain speed that hitting the median is going to launch your car into the air and over a fence into a backyard. And I think the car was a Corvette. And I, I don't care what anybody says, if you're in a sports car like that, you drive faster. It's almost human nature. It's like your foot somehow is magnetic on that pedal. Well, that's why you get a car like that. You, right. don't, you don't get a car like that to drive the speed limit. No. But still, just such a sad story. Yeah. And the pictures of this car, and it's right by the steps of the pool. It's literally like the car was getting into the pool. It's the weirdest thing. You know what? <laughs> let's let's get a news update from you. And then speaking of weird things, uh, we got a little story about a guy and a church. And oh boy, is it weird. And we'll get to that when we uh, finish up Handle on the News right after news update from Jennifer Jones Lee. It's KFI AM640 live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Four million people have now died from COVID-19 around the world. It took just 82 days for the last one million deaths. India saw the biggest increase at 26%, followed by Brazil. More tornadoes are possible as Tropical Storm Elsa goes from the southeast to New York. Ten people were hurt last night by a suspected tornado at a naval base in Georgia. And South Dakota is sending more National Guard troops to the border with Mexico. The governor says the request came from Homeland Security. About 3,000 Guard members from various states are already there helping with the surge of migrants. We'll take a look at your drive with ZKFI in the sky next. If you want out of your house, uh, moving, downsizing, you have financial issues, maybe you've inherited, so you list it with a broker, and that means hours of cleaning and painting and repairing and paying big fees. So let me give you another way of doing it. You get a fair price without any of that. The buyer never walks through your house. There's never an appraisal, no commissions, and you can get paid in cash within 10 days or less if you need it. That's directbuyers.com. That's the company that Janet and Matt, brother and sister, own, and I love the way they do business. They'll never lowball you. They're just honest folks. And let me tell you, a lot of schmucks in this industry, and that's not what they are. They'll give you an honest, no-obligation offer and even offer a $15,000 cash advance before closing. Go to directbuyers.com. That's directbuyers.com. Call 844-242-SELL. 844-242-SELL. Directbuyers.com. This week, stop by your neighborhood grocery outlet and get an amazing deal on Naked Brand Strawberry Banana Smoothie. 64-ounce bottles are just $2.99, a savings of up to 65%. SoCal weather from KFI, partly cloudy with highs from the upper 60s at the beaches to the low 100s inland. This report is brought to you by Grocery Outlet. From the Southern California Toyota Dealers Traffic Center, we make it easy. We're watching the 605. You bet you had a pretty good drive, actually. I've been coming out of the world around Irwindale to pick it up that south of 605. As I usually say, it's always an adventure, but right now it's in pretty good shape, really. All the way down through the 60, maybe a little slow at about Washington Boulevard. We just made the flight over there, so not too bad. Even uh, uh, leaving uh, Rancho Cucamonga now, the westbound 210, still in good shape. Over to the 57, that's where it gets real slow where you pick up a lot of company coming over 57. But once you clear the 605, maybe slow through about Santa Anita, and then you'll be okay. We're heading over to Carson right now as I speak to you for a look at that North 110 at the 405. If you just join us, someone lost control there and wound up in the ice pan. We'll see what happens. And Orange County, quite a problem that's uh, playing out right now. Northbound 405, the Euclid off is shut down. There's something crashed there, so just be aware. That should be there for about another half an hour. I'll keep you updated on it. Injured in an accident, visit Superwoman, superwarrior.com, KFI in the sky gets you there faster. I'm Jeff Bob. This report is sponsored by Los Angeles Pacific University. Psychology, teaching, nursing, whatever your passion is, theirs is getting you there. LA Pacific University is the nonprofit online university that you can afford. Apply now to launch your new future. Visit lapu.edu to learn more. That's lapu.edu. There's never been a better time to switch to Spectrum Mobile. You could save hundreds of dollars on your mobile bill. Plus, there are no added taxes, hidden fees, and no contracts. Try the Spectrum Mobile Savings Calculator today, and in three easy steps, you'll see how much you could save by switching. Visit SpectrumMobile.com slash save. 
Spectrum internet required. Savings may vary. Restrictions apply. Visit spectrummobile.com slash save for details. Looking to sell your valuable coins, high-end jewelry, collectibles, or fine art? Meet Cindy. She's been around the block when it comes to buying and selling jewelry. I buy jewelry to resell. I've been going to Tangible for about six, seven years. Tangible just pays more. Here's a great example of the tangible difference. I bought a gold and sapphire bracelet. I shopped it around. They offered me 50. They offered me 100. I bought it to Tangible and gave me $475. For it. More cash, more respect. Tangible treats me as well as they do the person coming in with, you know, $10,000 worth of gold. Tangible Investments owner Syl DiGenova has become America's top dealer in coins, precious metals, jewelry, and fine art. Syl guarantees you'll get more. Everything I've heard about them on the radio is true. Call now for a no-obligation free professional appraisal. 800-711-2800. 800-711-2800. 800-711-2800. Seven Eleven Twenty Eight Hundred. Rick Edelman, award-winning radio host and founder of Edelman Financial Engines, takes questions on his radio show. Let's hear his advice on annuities. Hey, Rick, I'm looking for a good investment. Should I consider a fixed annuity? Well, fixed annuities aren't really investments. They're insurance products. You'll get a fixed rate of return from them, but it might not be enough to offset taxes and inflation. Most annuity contracts require you to keep the money there for 5 to 10 years. And if you're under age 59 and a half, any withdrawals are subject to a 10% IRS penalty. You should talk, therefore, to a fee-based financial advisor to see if an annuity is right for you, not someone who makes a living earning commissions selling annuities. You want a fiduciary who puts your best interests first. If you're looking for a trusted partner who's got your back, Talk to one of our experienced financial planners by calling 888-PLAN-RICK or visit rickedelman.com. At Ralph, we know there's never a good time to run out of fresh. Luckily, our delivery and free pickup make it easy to grab what you need. So whether it's a few extra buns for the backyard barbecue or some miscellaneous munchies for movie night, we make it easy to get back to being you. Ralph, fresh for everyone. Free pickup on orders of $35 or more restrictions will apply. Get more ways to save at the buy five or more, save $1 each sale. Just buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with cards. Ralph's, fresh for everyone. I get on the plane, I go to put my suitcase in above my row. There's a smaller bag in there, so flip it around this other bag, and the flight attendant comes, ma'am, 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 ma'am. Ma'am! All of a sudden I realize I'm ma'am. And she's screaming at me like I'm an unruly passenger. Gary and Shannon, weekdays at 10 a.m. I knew it was seen, dude. She was pissed at me. On KFI. out today we're finishing up handle on the news and uh, before we get back into it i want to either tell you for the first time if you haven't heard it before or remind you starting next hour and every hour until we're done there's a chance for you to win a thousand dollars coming up around 20 after the hour that sounded right. like 45 cents Oh, the, the, the sound effect? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but what is the sound? Uh, I mean, you'd have to get a sound effect that approximates a thousand dollars, and then, and I'll go here with you, I don't care. We should probably get back to the news, but I don't care. We're going to unpack all the implications of what you just said. Of what a thousand dollars sounds like? Yeah, but the first, the first question is... Not that. Not that. Here's the first question. Is it a single thousand dollar bill? Is it a check for a thousand dollars? Is it a thousand singles? In my mind, it's one thousand dollar bill that gets thrown on the table and makes the sound of, well, bam! 
Okay, so not realistic. That's what you're saying. No, but in my mind, it's awesome. Thousand dollars. It's a grand in your hand. Oh, I like that. Starting. I didn't make that up. Oh. That's the official. That's actually the official branding. For the, oh, is it? Yeah, for the concert. <laughs> Just how much I paid. Read the emails, email. Jen. Read the emails. <laughs> anyway, that all starts. That now we spent too much time promoting it, but it does. It start. It starts next hour, and it's all throughout the day, Monday through Friday, on uh, KFI. That there's a chance to win a thousand dollars. So be here around twenty after, and you'll see exactly how it goes. Now back to handle on the news. Jennifer Jones, Lee, and me, and a guy climbed on top of a church in Boyle Heights and tried to set the cross on fire. Wow, that's not that's nice, dude. And it was, oh, sorry, John, it was a Catholic church, St. Mary's Catholic Church in uh, Boyle Heights. He was wearing only boxers and socks. Hello. He was on top of the bell tower, trying to light the cross on fire. Didn't work. Thank goodness. So then he got down, and he went across the roof, and then he turned into some ninja where he jumped from roof to roof, in the neighborhood, at one point they saw him climbing an electrical wire. In his socks? Spider-Man in boxers and socks, apparently. Wow. Uh, and eventually, and so they were they were able to keep an eye on him because they had uh, they must have had a copter up at that point. And eventually he came down to ground level, and they got you know they took him into custody, but they took him to the hospital to be evaluated. Right? They, they, technically, he was not arrested; he was detained. And because I'm sure they wanted to see, you know, is he is he having a severe mental issue or does he know exactly what he's doing? And what was the print on the boxers is what I want to know. I yeah, I don't know what so brand. I don't know. Person. I don't know what brand. I don't know if they were patterned or solid colors. Also, I don't want to get into this too. But sometimes the media, maybe they were boxer briefs or maybe they were no. shoe boxers. Oh. Who knows? All right, uh, Steve Gregory. Filed this next story for me, and it is slugged L.A. County big ass pot bust, and that might be the most appropriate slug I have seen in a really long time, because more than a billion dollars worth of marijuana was seized during what they're calling a historic bust in Antelope Valley. This was a 10-day operation. It resulted in the destruction of 17 tons of marijuana, 205 illegal pot farms. Hmm. According to the sheriff, the farms are connected to Mexican, Armenian, and Asian crime groups. This marijuana had a street value of $1.2 billion, according to the sheriff, and he says the operation had more than 400 deputies, and they made 131 arrests. Well, okay. First of all, guess who's coming on at 8 o'clock with all the details? Big ass pot boy. That's what you're calling Steve Gregory now? Well, only based on what he wrote. Uh, so that's number one. Steve Gregory's going to be here at 8. He even, uh, I think the uh, sheriff's department used images that he took, <clears throat> excuse me, with his drone in, in like, their public... Oh, fantastic. I mean, he really, yeah. So you want to talk about being all over a case. That's number one. Number two, it's nice to see diversity in the illegal pot industry. Oh, yeah. Mexican, Armenian, Asian. Everybody, yeah. And uh, would you have this at all if California had not ruined the legal pot industry with insane levels of taxation at every step? All it did the was the fact make that it. there's still that much of a market, a black yeah. market for weed in a in a state where in Southern California, I mean, you can't walk down the street without uh, seeing a pot dispensary. So you'd think there'd be no black market, but in fact, there's a thriving black market, and it's because the legal marijuana is apparently too expensive, and it's too expensive largely because of the layers of taxation yep. at every step. Do you ever read reviews of uh, pot dispensaries? No, I it's, agree. It is hilarious to read them, because most of them are people complaining that the particular dispensary that they're trashing uh, it's too expensive, oh. and I and I and I and I read them and go, "You dummies! You don't understand about the taxes." In other words, the re you know why it's expensive because they're legal, 
Yeah. That other dispensary that you claim to have loved that was so inexpensive, that's an illegal dispensary. But it's really the amount of taxes is just, it's insane. <clears throat> and yet hasn't generated the kind of life-changing tax revenue that we thought we might get. No. You know, it would be like a second lottery where it'd just be, oh my God, we're just awash in pot tax money. So they managed to do it in a way that, um, that keeps the legal industry stifled, but doesn't generate enough tax revenue because of that. In other words, if you cut the taxes in half, you get more revenue because way more people would buy legally than the black market. But by keeping the taxes high, a lot of people are still getting their marijuana on the black market. And these legal and then companies... Got, then you get zero revenue. Right, and these legal companies still run into, am I going by the state rules? Am I going by the federal rules? What do I do with all this money? I can't put it in a bank because yeah. if it's a federal bank, I can't put it in there. I mean, you talk about a situation where the cart was before the horse. Did anybody think of the ramifications of this before they just went, hey, I've got a great idea, let's throw it on the ballot? No, there was no planning about what could happen, what the fallout could be. All right, that is Handle on the News. We're going to get some news from Jennifer Jones Lee. And then, um, oh, guess who's ruining the country? Handle? Ask, well, <laughs> uh, kind of, <laughs> yes. <clears throat> oh. In a way. Uh, ba uh, boomers. Boomer workers who are now not workers anymore are ruining the country. And I will explain all the different ways that, that they're ruining it uh, right after some news from Jennifer Jones Lee on KFI AM 640, live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Your vaccine for stupidity. K-F-I. And K-O-S-T HD2. Los Angeles, Orange County. Live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Attack on firefighters. I'm Jennifer Jones Lee, live from the KFI 24 hour newsroom. Police in Redlands say they're investigating a report of a fire engine being shot at. They say at least one shot was reportedly fired at a Redlands Fire Department engine last night. They say the bullet went through the windshield on the driver's side, but firefighters who were inside the rig at the time were not hit. The LA County Sheriff says a recent operation in the Antelope Valley has shut down 205 illegal pot farms that we were just talking about and destroyed 17 tons of marijuana. The Sheriff says the street value of the stuff was $1.2 billion. Many of these grows have been directly tied to Mexican drug trafficking organizations and Asian and Armenian organized crime groups. Villanueva says they've identified at least 500 illegal pot farms in North County and he says the pandemic allowed those farms to pop up and flourish because no one was around. The sheriff says more than 400 deputies were part of the 10-day operation. At the Hall of Justice, Steve Gregory, KFI News. The California Department of Fish and Game says illegal pot farms are harming the ecosystem. Chloe Hakim is with the Environmental Scientist, and she's been noticing pesticides in streams, piles of trash, and sediment in rivers. One that a lot of people would know is the Joshua tree. A lot of growers have cut down Joshua trees and piled them up so they can place their hoop houses and begin their grow. Hakeem says these illegal grows cause long-term contamination to the soil and the poisoning of fish and birds. An excessive heat warning has been issued for the Antelope Valley, which includes Palmdale and Lancaster. We're looking for an extended period of extreme heat across the entire area. Meteorologist Rich Thompson with the National Weather Service says temperatures are expected to top out around 107 or 108 today but hit 115 over the weekend. People who live in Alabama are used to that sort of heat, but nothing like this. So this heat is, you know, 110, 115 degrees is extreme for anywhere. The heat warning will be effect in effect until 9 o'clock on Monday night. The federal civil rights lawsuit has been filed against L.A. County and the Sheriff's Department for the treatment of an inmate with schizophrenia who killed himself. Attorney Laura Jimenez says this case points to a bigger problem. This is not the first time this has happened where you have an inmate who has come in with known documented mental health issues who was overlooked and did not receive the proper treatment. Jimenez says the department knew Mark Carrillo was schizophrenic and he shouldn't have been in a cell alone at the Men's Central Jail. Carrillo spent a month in the jail before he killed himself in January. 
The county and city of L.A. have argued for an appeals panel to overrule a federal judge's order that everyone on Skid Row be offered housing by the end of October. L.A. Alliance lawyer Matthew Omhoffer says the need for judicial intervention was made clear by the testimony of city councilman Kevin DeLeon. What he said is that we know that Skid Row was designed to be an open-air prison. City attorney Michael Walsh says a single councilman doesn't speak for the city. The city speaks through the collective action of the council. L.A. legal aid attorney Shayla Myers argued on the same side as the city yesterday that Judge Carter's injunction doesn't solve the root of the problem. There's too few affordable housing units that are available, and too many people are falling into homelessness every day. Chris San Carlo, KFI News. The new CEO of LA Metro says officials will deal with homeless people on the metro system with compassion and dignity. Stephanie Wiggins says police should not be the first point of contact for homeless people on trains and buses. She said they should support Metro's homeless outreach teams who will help unhoused people find temporary or permanent housing services. The man accused of killing four people in a shooting rampage in Orange in March has been cleared medically to face court today for his arraignment. It's not clear if he has recovered enough, though, to help his lawyers in his defense. The attacker was shot in the head and had part of his brain removed during surgery. He's charged with multiple murder and attempted murder in the shooting of a real estate company's offices. A recovery operation has started at the site of the partially collapsed condo tower in South Florida. Miami-Dade County Mayor Daniela Levine Cava says today is the first full day that emergency crews will be looking for remains instead of survivors. Nothing we can do can bring back those we've lost, but we can and we will do everything in our power possible to identify all of the victims and to offer closure to the families. No one found in the rubble in the past two weeks has been found alive. So far, 54 people have been found dead, and more than 80 others are still unaccounted for. And Tropical Storm Elsa is weakening as it heads up the East Coast. Meteorologist Ginger Z says there's potential for tornadoes from South Carolina all the way up to Delaware. And those tropical storm warnings now go from Long Beach, New York, all the way through Long Island, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and even Boston. So it was finally done with Elsa by the time we reach Friday night. She says people in North Carolina, the Outer Banks, and Virginia should also watch out for tornadoes. Let's check out your drive on the 110 in Carson. You betcha. A little bit good news to start this traffic report. Good morning, and thanks for taking us along for the ride here, as always. There was quite a problem. Northbound uh, 110 right around the 405 Carson, right outside where the, the blimp hangs out these days. The good year blimp. But uh, it's clear. It was a car into the ice plate, so don't you worry about it. That drive through there is pretty good. The North 110 after that, just be kind of morning drive slow coming up from uh, the 105. There was a fire at Vernon, but uh, not an issue now. Uh, going over Fountain Valley, this is still an issue. We have conflicting reports with north and with south, but we're going to go with south 405. South 405, the Euclid off is the one that's blocked, and it could be there for a little while. It was a truck problem with a load of dirt and a whole bunch of stuff going on. Uh, going over to the 15, coming out of the Big Pass there, not too bad, a little slow around the 210, really. After that, in fairly good shape, down through the 60. If you pick up the westbound uh, 210, it's still in good shape, but boy, it's getting real busy at that merge with the uh, North 57 traffic going out through Warrendale and actually stays that way to about Brittle and then finally approves going in towards passes the Injured in an accident, visit superwoman, superlawyer.com, Jeff Bach, AFI in the sky. If uh, you've been skipping dental appointments for years because, well, you're scared of going to the dentist, dental anxiety. Uh, or maybe you're getting uh, afraid of getting bad news about your teeth. They're terrible. They're horrible. you got to do something about it. Let me tell you about Cunning Dental. Uh, Dr. Cunning started his practice 52 years ago. He's still practicing. From day one, he's dealt with people that are frightened of going to the dentist. He can fix your problems in one or two appointments, and he does it while you sleep either full anesthesia or what they call the twilight sleep, and you wake up literally with a gorgeous, new, beautiful smile. This is dental treatment without dental anxiety. Implants, crowns, root canals, smile makeovers, and of course the new permanent teeth in a day procedure done while you sleep. Right now until August 31, $500 off any sleep treatment, and that is good off of any procedures. Restrictions apply. Call 888-640-SMILE, 888-640-SMILE, 888-640-SMILE. A hey, U-Line, they know going the extra mile takes hard work. For companies pushing to go further, U-Line will go the distance with you. 24-7, they answer the phone to get you the shipping and industrial supplies you need. Business can move fast. 
unexpected large orders, adverse weather, new safety guidelines, and changing economic trends. Uline works hard keeping 38,000 items ready to ship, minimizing detours on your way to the extra mile. Visit Uline.com. Your KFI Financial Report is brought to you by Bay Alarm. The Dow is down 376, S&P dropping 53, NASDAQ down 189, gold is 18.09 an ounce, and oil is 71.65 a barrel. The KFI Money Report is brought to you by Bay Alarm, now offering virtual security consultations using your mobile phone. Visit BayAlarm.com to get protected today. Partly cloudy today as the range from the upper 60s at the coast to the low 100s inland. We leave local. Live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom, I'm Jennifer Jones-Lee. Good morning, Bill Handel's show. Bill's out today. Some of the top stories we're following here at KFI. The global death toll from COVID-19 hit the 4 million milestone yesterday. And up in Sacramento, at least nine people who work at the uh, Capitol tested positive for the coronavirus last week, including four people who were fully vaccinated. And that means a return of a mask mandate for lawmakers and their staff when they're working in their offices. All right. <sighs> Boomers, sit down. We got to have a talk because you're ruining the country. And you're ruining the country because you don't want to work anymore. Now, we can't have it. We cannot have this, Boomers. You're going to have to not retire if you were thinking about it, and if you did already, you have to go back to work, because here's the problem. Yes, the pandemic definitely caused people to rethink their priorities, and there have been uh, a lot of people at the uh, older end of the boomer generation who, during the pandemic, had time to think about, how much better off really will I be financially if I go back to work for two, three, four, five more years? And a lot of them decided... I'm not going to be that much better off. Some people found out they're better off financially than they really realized, and they don't need to work anymore. Other people decided that they would rather have just a little bit less economic wherewithal and a lot more free time to do what they want. The fact is, uh, adults 55 and older participating in the labor force is not keeping pace with the rest of the population. It's actually down from last fall. Now that is in contrast to the younger workers, people considering the prime working ages are uh, 25 to 54, they are getting back to work in large numbers. Why do we care, right? That's all right, old man. You can retire. Nobody's going to miss you. We got plenty of young people who need jobs. Well, <laughs> not so fast. First of all, you read all the time, you hear on KFI all the time about employers who cannot find anybody to fill their jobs that they have open. That there actually are a lot of jobs open, and in some industries, they're having big trouble getting enough people to fill those jobs. There are restaurants that are still operating on reduced capacity, not because of COVID, not because they have to for uh, health department reasons, but because they, they don't have enough people working there to operate at full capacity. So you'll see lines outside of some restaurants, and you think, oh my God, there must be a madhouse in there. And when you finally get inside, no, the, the place is maybe half full at best. Just because they literally don't have enough people to cook the food and wash the dishes and serve it at full capacity. So 
Part of that is because we are at a somewhat low period of immigration into the country. You know, we went through an administration that definitely cut back on almost every avenue of immigration into the country. We're still feeling that. So that's one source of potential employees that is gone. Or at least greatly, greatly diminished. And then you have the problem that you do have younger workers also not coming back after the pandemic. They're coming back faster than the boomers, but not as fast as everybody hoped. And so employers were really counting on, quite honestly, the boomers to kind of fill the gaps. So you have labor shortage. When you have a labor shortage, what else do you have? You have an increase in wages. Wages are going up. And the boomers are... A lot of boomers, basically, who wouldn't have thought about stopping working, have stopped working. And they're not coming back. And it's going to ripple through the economy for a long time. You're going to have cycles of labor shortages. Obviously, the pressure... Uh, to pay more is going to increase. You don't even want to think about what's going to happen to Social Security. Because, you know, we need the workers to pay in. You're going to have more people taking Social Security, fewer people paying in. So, based on all of that, the only answer clearly is for the military to go around, knock on doors, and uh, pull... Pull you lazy boomers out of your houses, get the McDonald's uniform onto you, get you back to work. Okay, because we can't have this. All right, let's get a news update from Jennifer Jones Lee. And when we come back, it'll be your chance to win $1,000 right here on KFI AM 640, live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. President Biden and Vice President Harris.